This is Nerd News Cafe. Stir it up with Matt, Landon, and Justin. Get ready to stir it up. It is round 30, baby. Woo! We made it. <laughs> we made it. Was that a Ric Flair woo throwing woo! it in there? Woo! Yeah, poor Ric Flair. Just, you know, in our, he's in our thoughts and in our voices. That's today. right. Thinking about him every day. Every time I do something amazing, I always go, woo! Yeah, you got to. <laughs> See? The dog's into it too, man. Are you the nature dog? The nature dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But I am, I am ready. That's enough from you. <laughs> That's right. That'll be enough. Thank you very much. You Nope. That's enough. Okay, she's good. I am ready. It is time. It is time for another stirred up. I think it is. It's Thursday. Uh, the eclipse has happened. I'm currently in a bunker, <laughs> speaking to Justin through a cup and wire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this is our uh, our radio call to see if anybody else made it through it. That's right. Yeah. Where are you guys at? What supplies do you have? What can we trade? <laughs> I have water. Do you have candy bars? <laughs> <laughs> we can crack wise. Is that worth anything? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We can talk about all the pop culture things that used to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that Justice League movie we were worried about? Now we'll never know. We yeah. can just imagine it was going to be great. I'm thinking about raiding Hollywood, you know, getting in a car with uh, this guy. I can't remember his name. Tala, Tala something. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so yeah, man, are you are you ready to get it going with uh, with your books of delight? That- I think so. You didn't introduce yourself. He's Matt. I don't, no one cares. That's Matt. No one cares. We have no names. We have no designations now. I am Brutus. He's he's Matt Brutus Matt. Brutus Matt, yeah. I am Matt the Brutus Beefcake. <laughs> I am Caesar Salad Justin. There you go. No landing, guys. No landing today. No landing. He, um, his bunker did not alleviate to a radio. We're hoping to get him something. He may or may not have looked directly at the eclipse <laughs> with no eye protection whatsoever. That's true. He melted his brain and eyeballs. <laughs> He actually ascended to some like galactic power now. He's that's one true. With, he's one with the universe. If there's somebody that was gonna get, you know, called up to the big leagues, that's definitely him. <laughs> In his own mind. In his own mind. <laughs> but let's get to it. It is time for Comic Book Corner. Let that echo just fade in. I was about to say you're letting it letting it resonate. Yeah. Enjoy it. Savor it. Um a couple big ones today that I'm gonna talk to you about. And you're going to listen. <laughs> that was an interesting intro. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> you're going to listen. You well, will listen to this. Of course they're going to listen if they're listening. You have no now. choice. <laughs> well, I guess you could stop, but don't do yeah, that. Yeah, don't do that. Um, I got another like shiny, glossy cover in my hand here. Another hobo shingle. Because, yeah. <laughs> adding on to the strength of my roof that I you know, right. had to build in my little... Um, I, I, get, I do get to live in the garage. I was about to say, I thought she moved you into the garage. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I and these books keep me warm at night. That's right. <laughs> it, it's plenty warm in the garage. I'll say. <laughs> um, Dark Knight's Metal number one Metal. came out last week. They couldn't have one character doing the the, the finger horns. <laughs> well, it kind of look actually look at it. It looks like a thumb right here. Oh, okay, and it kind of looks like fingers. Okay, does it not? okay, it does. I get it. it you're right. I'm. You have corrected me. It is the they, finger they've, horns. They've kind of made the um, horns, Good observation. Up the horns out nice. of the characters on this cover. Uh, it, Superman uh, looks like the index finger. Yeah. Wonder Woman's the pinky. I think Batman with his cape is the, the thumb. thumb. Yeah. That's he's, what it looks he's like. Thumb. Yeah. As if it's that's a right hand. That's it. You got it. That's exactly what that's that exactly is. That's exactly what that is. <laughs> I didn't even Mystery notice. Mystery solved. I didn't even notice that until you asked about it. But yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, there were three covers for this, just like there have been for mm-hmm. like the the forge and the casting, and uh, I got the glossy one because I'm a sucker for shiny glossy. Why would you not? Yeah. Um, so this one, we are kicking off the invasion of the dark multiverse in earnest. Um, God, there is so much that <laughs> that goes on. <laughs> Actually, even even the forge and the casting, they're really interesting, but there there's so much that you have to absorb as you're reading those mm-hmm. books. You know, Batman's investigating. Some major thing that he knows is a threat to the entire universe. Um, the rest of the Justice League is somewhat in the dark about what's happening, but they're trying to help him out. And we know it involves this nth metal mm-hmm. um, that he's been researching and come in contact with. And basically, wh- where we start this one, there's a, there's a pretty cool scene at the beginning. And I don't know how exactly we got there, but 
the Justice League members are in an arena. If you think of Thor Ragnarok, it's similar to this hmm. because we've got the we've got the Justice League members, and they they all have some version of like a suit of armor that they're wearing. Yeah, and why it, would Superman need a suit of armor? Because this was actually each one of these pieces of metal was put onto these uh, individuals by uh, Mongol, M O N G U L mm-hmm. Mongol, and um, somehow he's incorporated like whatever the weakness is for each one of these characters into the suit of armor piece that they're wearing because oh. he's making them fight like regular people and he's sending all these monsters out and they have to, you know, survive, fight for his amusement. Hmm. So like the Flash is wearing some boots that uh. basically eliminate his speed. Um, Wonder Woman has a chest piece on that has some sort of a venom mm-hmm. in it that that is, you know, causing her to not have her powers. Green Lantern's wearing a helmet that's blocking him from using any kind of mental powers or controlling his ring. And he's got, a, I think there's like a gauntlet on. Um, so yeah, each one of them has kind of an individual thing <laughs> going on. Aquaman's wearing a dehydration pack. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so what we find out is that uh, Mongol is forcing um, the Toy Man. Ah, to I've heard of him. Yeah, to throw um, Beast into the ring against the Justice League. So he's like, all right, we're ready for the next round. Toy Man, who's coming next? And he says, I call it Fulcum Abominus. And Mongo's like, ha-ha, Fulcum Abominus. I love it. And now, my friends, it's that time. That sounded a little skeletorish. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> but what we're building to, so these things, they're, they're mechanical, and they all march into the ring, and they all have colors. <laughs> Thanks, Bixby. They 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 all have colors that are kind of representative of the Justice League members. There's one for each one of them. Mm-hmm. Well, Batman, being the genius that he is, figures out through the Fulcum Abominus that these things. It, it was basically a secret message that the Toy uh. Man was sending to the Justice League, and they are capable of taking him, taking them down. But what they want to do is each one of these inside their mouth has a button that like corresponds to their symbol. Mm-hmm. And so they have to somehow get in there, press the button, and then let the thing absorb them. Like it puts tentacles all over them, almost like it's eating them. And it kind of becomes like a Power Rangers situation. And they basically create like a... Their own zords. They create a Megazord nice. out of themselves. So they're all getting eaten. You know, each one of them is like, all right, Batman, we trust you. And they let it happen, and then they do create this, like, ultimate Megazord thing. That's pretty cool. That they can start, like, fighting their way out of the arena with. So that's kind of cool. It was a cool opening scene. I don't know how we got there, because I really don't think this was mentioned in the (laughs) casting. Um, But maybe I missed something. Um, Flash was upset that he was afoot, by the way. Oh, I I can see that. He was not happy about that. Of course, Batman was the head. Of course he is. He's the brains of the operation. He's the brains of the operation. Yeah. Greatest detective. So... As they get back to Earth, this seems to have been kind of a distraction for them just to keep Mm -hmm. them away because now this huge mountain has emerged in the middle of Gotham City. (laughs) Poor Gotham. Right in the middle. Yeah, just destroyed the whole darn thing. And uh, so Batman's like, you know, look at all this devastation. What are we going to do? And and, um, they're all kind of feeling a little bit lost. They find a way into the mountain and discover it's... There's a message that's in one of these rooms that says it's chasing us run, and it's all building up to... Essentially, I, I don't want to like recite the whole thing to you guys, because this this is just... It's crazy, and there's a lot to absorb. There's a, there's a lot going on. Yeah, but but basically... Oh, Falcon. The, or Condor, yeah, sorry. The message is that um, there's this team that's kind of been like watching all along, keeping up with Batman, and they they seem to be on the same path that he is. As it turns out... They've become aware that Batman is is kind of supposed to be the conduit for whatever's trying to come through the dark universe into the current multiverse, hmm. and they try to take him out. Of course, he's oh, having course. he's having none of that. One of the things that's kind of cool is they show this map of the multiverse, and there's 52 of them. Of course, yeah, and um, they're showing like, all right, here are all the known multiverses, but this power that's you know coming through and this metal, the nth metal, doesn't come from any of these places. We don't know where it comes from, and so she flips the map over, and it's just black. And she's like, "This is the dark multiverse that, or dark universe that we've become aware of," and uh, we, we're pretty sure that all this is coming from there. And uh, now the the gate's getting ready to be open, and we feel and apparently. They mentioned that Wayne somehow translates to wagon, 
and he's supposed to be like the transport that brings. Th- okay. They're talking about this big evil dragon. Okay. Okay. They call it something bar barba. It's spelled Barbados. B-A- yeah, it's spelled B A R B A T O S. Barbados. So it might be Barbados. I don't know. Barbados. It, and uh, that's it's what French. they're they're all afraid. <laughs> they're all afraid of it coming through. So the end like of this, Lobo. like, yeah, uh, Batman ends up riding a Velociraptor to like get away well, from the course. situation. But they do kind of tease that the gateway's been open. They show you know some silhouettes of some things that are coming through. And that big scene, and then the next scene is Batman on a microscope. Of course, <laughs> he's like, I'm just doing a little study. Yeah, he's got to study up. Um, and he starts getting so this whole time, the, the backstory's kind of been narrated to us through this journal. Mm-hmm. And at the end of this, we realize that the journal that we're reading from has actually been hidden in Batman's house in Gotham Manor. He or Wayne Manor, he didn't know, mm-hmm. but it starts like calling to him because something has triggered it, and he goes and finds it. And um, it gives him, it basically fills in all the holes of the story that he's kind of been, you know, um, trying to uncover. Yeah. And that's kind of the setup for the next one. So at the very end of it, um, he gets a vision uh, of the dream of the endless who tells him that the nightmare has only just begun. So Hmm. the bad guys are getting ready to flood through the gates. Things are about to get crazy in the, in Gotham City. And... Here's hoping the Justice League can save us all. They'll save us. I hope so. So the next thing, uh, Dark Dark Knight Metal Number Two comes out uh, mid September, September thirteenth. But there's, I guess, leading up to that, Teen Titans Number Twelve also comes out on the thirteenth, and that's involved in this story. Um, and then on the twentieth, Batman: The Red Death Number One and Nightwing Twenty Nine are the are um, continuing the story. Um, so. Right on until this is going to go all the way to Dark Knight Metal number six, which is comes out on Valentine's Day. Nice. Another Valentine's Day date. Yep. <laughs> Let's read this together. Well, that's for, you know, maybe people don't necessarily have much to do on I Valentine's Day. I don't think there's Day anything and... traditional about that. Yeah. You do you. So going from one event to another, a DC event to a Marvel event, we've got the <laughs> next, the next generations came out, and I did not know... Which one was scheduled to come out this week? But it turned out to be uh, Generations number one, the best, featuring Wolverine and X twenty three. I think that's probably one of the best ones that that they could pair together. Like yeah. I said, if there was if there were people who needed questions answered, it's those two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree, and I and I can tell you after reading this one, this has been my favorite so far. And I know nice. I'm a little bit. Uh, Bias, I would say, because I've always been a huge Wolverine fan. Yeah, me too. Um, but I really do like X twenty three too. I, the the new books that they've been making for her have been I, great. I'm really glad that that you know that we. I hate that Logan died. You know mm-hmm. that we had to push away that character from me, but he's had a long, long stint. And I'm glad that they're really embracing X twenty three. Just yeah, you know, going full out with it. This is the future kind of thing. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this book. Again, the current version of the character, so X-23, gets mm-hmm. gets sucked back in time. And this is like, I would say it's pretty early Wolverine. I don't know if it's 80s or It's or yellow. What, <laughs> yellow what, spandex Wolverine. Yeah, what era they're putting him in. But um, it's definitely before like a lot of you know current things have happened. Um, so essentially, she, she get, this one starts with Wolverine, as opposed to starting with her trying to figure out where she's at. And he's fighting a bunch of um, ninjas of the hand, and they're mm-hmm. all they're all undead ninjas. And he's taking them out, but he's like, "I'm not going to make it. There's too many of them. No matter how many I kill, they keep coming. And even though I can heal, they they try to put like a bunch of these um, like uh, hooks in him, and they're trying to take him underwater because he's like, if they if they pull me down there, I'm done because yeah. my brain still needs oxygen. Yeah, if he drowns, he's dead. Supposedly, yeah. So, uh, but she shows up. X twenty three shows up and essentially saves him. Um, so they end up getting out of the situation. And what's happened is he's trying to break into this facility where uh, his adopted daughter is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I can't remember what, I'm trying to find it really quick, but um, is it Akiko? Is that his daughter? I think so. That sounds right. Yeah. Akiko, um, he adopted her with Mariko. Mm-hmm. And Akiko is, has been captured. So, and it's a, it's a trap, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's it a trap. They're trying to pull him in because they're trying to kill him. Um, so X-23 comes in, helps out, and she's not there. There's a, there's a pretty crazy scene where there was one ninja left who had a grenade, and uh, it blows him up. I mean, it burns his 
all his beard, his hair, everything. Yeah. He, he looks like Deadpool, actually. I, that's exactly what I thought. I was like, are they bringing in Deadpool? Yeah, it makes it look like him, but then, um, but no, he's he turns out to be all right, of course, because he's Wolverine. You can't Wolverine. kill him with a grenade. Um, action sequence because then they find out that they're they they've taken Akiko to the airport. They're putting her on a plane, taking her away. X twenty three Wolverine show up. Um, the plane was already on the tarmac getting ready to go the runway so they they grab onto the landing gear the and have to like climb up trick. Yep. yeah have to climb up after the plane's like pretty much going off the ground the big surprise here is they get on the plane they expect you know the hand to be there but there's somebody else there that's holding a Kiko mm-hmm. captive and it's an old nemesis and this is why I was saying I, I think this is much older than like if this isn't like that's 2000s cuz this is an old looking too. saber tooth yeah that's an old version of that person yeah um and he is not aware. Of course, Wolverine throughout this whole thing, he's trying to figure out who this X twenty three is. You know, he's he doesn't mm-hmm. he doesn't he's never he's seen her before. He's not the most intuitive of people. But he keeps saying, you know, she's a lot like me. She's got claws, and he he figures out she can heal. Uh, she mentions that she's got she can pick up on scents and different things mm-hmm. like that. So he's like, this is pretty weird. And then he even mentions at one point that he hasn't seen those eyes since he saw his um, since he looked at his mother. Mm-hmm. So he picks up that has to be family. Yeah. Um. So so he's picked up on all that. Well, X twenty three ends up kind of saving the day um, there because she surprises Sabretooth, knocks him out of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> um. They smash into the ground, and then Wolverine like gets the plane turned around, and he comes and gets involved as well. It's it's there's a a pretty cool scene here where, um, Sabretooth is they, they've got him pretty much. Uh, I would say you know dead to rights. Um, and then she kind of delivers like a killing blow on him. She's she, got that blade in the boot. Yeah. Puts mm-hmm. the toe right at his throat. Blade comes out just poof, right through the, right through the throat. Um, now what I was going to mention is at the very end of this, they have a pretty emotional moment together where, you know, he kind of mentions he get, he, he has a pretty good idea of who she is. Yeah. And, uh, he, they drop a Kiko off with Mariko and he's ready to just right. leave. And she says to him, you know, you have, she realizes he feels much more comfortable out risking his life fighting undead ninjas than, family life. than trying to be a father. And she's like, but you know what? You need to try to take these moments. You don't get that many of them. Go in there and try to be a father to Akiko. And, um, and he's like, you know, he, he, he gets that she must have come from the future mm-hmm. because he hasn't met her yet and that she's delivering an important message. And he's like, all right, well, are you coming with me? And then that's when she starts to vanish. And he, she's like, no, I don't think I can. Um, but she says, I don't want to leave. And then they hug and he says, goodbye. She says, goodbye, dad. So it's, it actually like, it's a, it's a they did a pretty good job. Like it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty little touching moment there between um, Laura and, and uh, I always call her X-23. I think her name's Laura. Laura and uh, Logan there yeah. at the end of it. But then uh, that's kind of where it ends. So she goes back to her time after that. So, her purpose, it seems like, was more of affecting Logan than it was yeah. like her having any kind of realization. Where, okay. Whereas for the, the other, other ones, ones were more, of, yeah, more of a teaching moment. Maybe she's trying to correct some wrongs in her life. Yeah. You know, like settle this, and then I get more of what I want later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was a, kind of an interesting twist on it. This one was, like I said, a little different, but I really did enjoy it quite a bit. Um, this story, it says next sibling rivalry, the all new Wolverine number 25, which comes out in October and it's got, I mean, I don't know who that other Laura and then somebody with his back to her that has a nice, a nice mohawk. Is that Billy? Uh, Jimmy? Jimmy. Sorry. No, that's not Jimmy. I don't know who that guy is. Is that Sabretooth's son? (sighs) Maybe. (laughs) So looks whoever it is has the bone claws. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty crazy. So (sighs) I, you know. I didn't buy this week. Um, I didn't buy any of like the the other like continuing stories that I've been following. I just I kind of mm-hmm. wanted to focus in on these two particular sure. events that are kind of ongoing, especially with metal coming out. That was a pretty big release. Um, actually, our local comic book shop, Nerdvana, had a or Nirvana Knoxville, Nirvana mm-hmm. Comics, Nirvana actually, now had a midnight release party. Nice um, for the for the Batman metal. I didn't get to go to that, but uh, but I mean, pretty cool. It was a nice little way to to kind of generate some excitement for sure. It. Yeah, I mean it's, it's it looks it looks I mean it's very intense. Yeah, and like you said, there was already a call to like 
get a second printing because mm-hmm. some of these places are I had, selling out. There, there was a couple of things about it that, you know, they, they've they already done a second printing and they're talking about, you know, more. Mm-hmm. So and evidently it's, it's a big deal. Yeah. It kind of feels like both, even though DC did their rebirth at the beginning of this year, Marvel's getting ready to kind of hit the reset button with this legacy thing. Mm-hmm. They're kind of both building almost to the same thing where they're kind of like setting up what's going to be the, the universes for the next several years, you know? Mm-hmm. So... Because you know, we gotta, we got It's like we, it's like clearing the table. We've had our dinner, we've had our meals. Right, now we gotta to... clear the table and get ready for the next, next Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Yeah. I don't know. I, I understand hitting the reset button or letting some people get in there and go with some fresh, you know, writing or whatever. I mean, that's what comic books are about—just different versions. Mm-hmm. So, yep. there's no, there's no mainstream. I don't think anymore. Nah, but. I think I, I kind of think that's what they're going for, though. It's almost like they're trying to get a unified, you know, maybe maybe trim down the multi universe kind of thing that's mm-hmm. going on, and and get it to like what what do we want the main storyline to be right now, and going and for at least the next who knows until they decide to start doing more time crisis type stuff. In yeah, well, parallel with, universe with Marvel, you know, it's that blue and gold. It seems to be the the mainstream, at least from what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. So. With the X-Men. Yeah, with the yeah, X-Men for X-Men. sure. And I'm sure everybody's got that kind of thing going on. And with that Generations, I think it's just more or less the what-ifs and pairings. and So that's cool. Mm-hmm. But that'll do it for the comic books today. Um, it's a, it's go a out, good ones, definitely. Go out, pick something up from your local shop. Always want to push shopping local. Shop buying local. local. Buy local. Keep money in your local stores. We need those places to stay open. Yeah, you don't want to give in to the corporate. Yeah. <laughs> and... uh and enjoy. Enjoy the adventure, my friends. Enjoy it. <laughs> um, so with that and Landon not being present, mm-hmm. um, with the hot and streamy, yeah. you wanted to... I think we should talk about Defenders for hot and streamy. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Had a big premiere this past week. It's been everywhere. I mean, it's all over Twitter. It's all over Facebook. It's it's on several articles. And of course, we had the build up, you know, all the critic talk beforehand. So yep. it was... Uh, and you're farther along than I am. I am. I'm 80% through it, which is only eight episodes, but I'm midway through six. Okay. I had to stop to come to this. So. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. No, no. I I was trying to get, I was trying to enjoy it, but binge yeah. it as, as far as I could before we had to, you know, record. And, and I know Landon's going to have his opinions. Oh, he's watched the whole he's thing. He's watched the whole thing. And I was, I was hoping that, you know, he uh, wouldn't be dying, but... Maybe we'll get him to do a little spot we can drop in, maybe, and, and yeah, absolutely, and throw in his opinion here. We can tag it on, but I've only watched the first episode, okay. so so we've got two different kind of viewpoints of this. Mm-hmm. Now I know you were saying that like it starts out okay, but then it, you, you start to question if things are going to turn out all right. Maybe episode two, three. It's it's really rough up front. Okay, I feel like there's a lot of jumping around, um, and th- th- there is a lot of Danny. I yeah. mean, it's, 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 but I mean, this is his war. Mm-hmm. So in a sense, it's, it's all about him. And then you learn out, you know, you learn some things that it truly is all about him. Um, th- there is a lot of him. And I mean, yeah. this, they, they put a lot of the plot on his shoulders. Yeah. Um, there, I will say this though, the fight sequences are spectacular. There's some really good fighting in it. It's not your typical, um, Marvel Avenger kind of fighting where like they're just putting everything down they get into contact with. Mm -hmm. Nope, they get the crap beat out of them quite a few times. Yeah. In different segments, in different ways. You know, you get to see people's actual powers. You get to see them actually... There's a little bit of rockiness, and I don't know if you saw it, like with their powers and then... (sighs) Did you get to where they've started to to meet up? Mm Mm-mm. They haven't met yet. It organically kind of happens in a way, and I like who... um, instigates that kind of meetings but man it is rough to watch the chemistry that is not there yeah <laughs> i mean it's, and it's not supposed to be uh, mm-hmm. i'm not saying like between the actors i'm saying like the characters that they don't you know why would any of them trust any of them right you know they've dealt with so many crazy people up to this point but i tell you this watching it i sure do miss daredevil yeah <laughs> i mean that guy is so good at that character and that character is so well thought out mm-hmm. um and then jessica jones is just right there with it and luke cage and i don't know for a fact i kind of feel like i'm gonna have to go back and watch iron fist which is not what i want to do <laughs> but i think they've added sound to his punches oh really because when he punches somebody it's like boom 
Mm-hmm. Boom. I mean, it's right in, like, I was listening to headphones, and it is right in your ears. So I don't know if they're trying to emphasize his power now <laughs> by, you know, amping his sound up. But it kind of adds to it. I mean, you kind of feel he's more powerful. Hmm. He still gets his ass kicked. <laughs> so, um, D- okay. So without watching Iron Fist, I watched the first episode of Defenders, and I saw him. I saw him harness his chi. Yes, in, just in that first scene where he yes. gets the power in his fist and punches that person like back through several rooms of mm-hmm. the sewer. They're fighting in a sewer by the. When I now I'll tell I you didn't this. like that sequence. It's too quick. Katana fighting in a sewer. I was like, are we watching Ninja Turtles? <laughs> Is it pizza time? Pizza I didn't know what was time. going on. But uh, as, long as, as long as you don't see any giant rats, you're okay. Yeah. But it started out with that, and it, it I didn't like that either. It was almost hard to follow. It's too quick, and it's too dark. Yeah. You can't, and I think that was the intention, because the person who comes in with the mm-hmm. the double sword there, um, and you find out lots more about that character. Okay. Um, they, I don't think they want you to know what's going on. Okay. I think the intention is th- this is what's happening, but it's really not an emphasis on the fighting. Yeah, you get more of that later. And then we see Luke getting out of jail. Yep, and he meets up with Foggy, which I thought was interesting. Yep, yep, that's the connection there. Yeah, Luke, hey, man, that guy is great. Yeah, he is. I will say that I feel like they toned him back a little bit in this. Okay. Um, there is a an action sequence though that starts out with Danny. And him fighting, and the music changes when Luke walks in. So they kind of change how you usually get the. the mm-hmm. You know how every every one of these shows has got a feel to it. The music yeah. they use, the sound and stuff. They change it as characters enter the scene, yeah. and they, like the 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 soundtrack adapts. Like you go from Danny's kind of like yeah. you know bongo beating, <laughs> you know, kind of like a Asian kind of sound. And when Luke comes in, you get like this street. Music, yeah, yeah, you get like this. You know. Um, Kind of like a hometown, homegrown kind of music. And then you get Jessica later on, and it's got her kind of like mysterious, you know, it's really good. Yeah. I think they did a really good job with it from what I've seen so far. Sigourney Weaver is excellent. Yeah. Um, I don't think, it, you know, you're not going to watch Iron Fist. I don't think you'll be lost other than knowing what he is and where he comes from because it is heavy, heavy, heavy on his story. What I meant to ask was, so we first meet him, and then now my daughter did watch Iron Fist, correct? And, and she actually really enjoyed yeah, she it. She said it. But is he still kind of figuring things out? Yep. It's, okay. We this is I, watching Defenders. I, to tell you the truth, they probably should have released this. I know why they couldn't, but they probably should have released this because it gives you an idea that this Iron Fist is so young. Yeah. Is so inexperienced and not knowing what he's for. Okay. That's the impression that makes I got. So much. Just yeah. in the first one. Well, the first, you know, in Iron Fist, when you watch it, you get the impression he knows exactly who he is, what he's supposed to be doing. Okay. And he's just lost in a world that he doesn't understand. But in this, like I said, it gives you that, oh, he he doesn't he yeah. doesn't know anything about himself. Mm-hmm. He doesn't even know what he's about. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. What you were saying about like each of the characters having their own theme surrounding mm-hmm. them, the music, the tone... I found the first episode kind of jarring sometimes because mm-hmm. since they're all separated, every time it goes from character there to character, there is no transition. There's no transition, <laughs> and like like you said, Luke Cage, even even like the I would say like the color palette for Luke Cage yes. is different. The music is different, and then it switches to Jessica Jones, which is a totally different color palette and music scheme. Very very dark. Very yeah. She's got a lot of like purples and blues and shadowy mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And I Luke's... almost feel like there's a fog with it. It comes her yeah. like a mist in everything she does. Yeah, and so it keeps kind of switching, and it's almost like you're switching channels. Like, mm-hmm. all right, now I'm going to switch to Luke Cage for a minute. Now <laughs> Jessica Jones. So it's weird. But what you were saying too, one of the things that reinforced for me was that out of the team. Mm-hmm. Daredevil and Jessica Jones stand above the other two for me. Yeah, they do. And I don't know which one I really... I think I like Daredevil the most. He is so good. He's it's, so good. The actor's so good. The character's well put together. It's just... it. They did... They put the time and the money into Daredevil and figuring that character out. Because yeah. before him, it was Joke City it for really Daredevil. Was. It was Joke City. And um, they bring back every side character in this thing. If if, if you've seen any of them, there's going to be a couple people you don't know who they are. Yeah. And I'm sure you don't know who the woman is running around with the Iron Fist. Well, I mean, only you've because, got an idea. You've got an idea. Only because I happen to see an episode or two that my daughter watched. Okay. So, so I you do see know who she clear, is. You get a little clarity with her. Yeah. I mean, she's she's 
uh, I guess I can spoil Iron Hand because, or you know, that's that's their problem now. Or Iron Fist. Um, she was raised in the Hand mm-hmm. to be. Uh, they they basically lied to her in a sense and saying, "Oh, the Hand does good work. We're mm-hmm. we're all of you know the reverse organization." Iron Fist comes along. He's she's led him. He doesn't know he's in the Hand. Mm-hmm. Um, and they help him focus his chi, mm-hmm. her sensei does, blah, blah, blah. Once he figures out who they are, of course he's going to try to kill them all, mm-hmm. and they kind of fall in love, blah, blah, blah. She defects. Yep. But it's like defecting from your family. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. Um, so she's been with him since then. Okay. Um, and that's where we've got her now. She's kind of running around with him, going everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got the, uh, he, he's an unlimited resource kind of guy. Yeah. If yeah. you haven't guessed that. He, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's greasing the wheels. Yeah. He's, he's the one. That, I mean, I think in the first one, don't we see him in a private jet? Yep, a helicopter. Yeah. yeah. He, he goes from wherever he was, where, uh, they were in a sewer in what, Paris or something? No, it was oh, no. Bangladesh. Oh, or Bangladesh. Something. Yeah. It was somewhere, yeah. wherever across the world. Private jet, helicopter ride. Yeah. You know, nice car. I mean, this guy's, oh, yeah. you know. He's he's got the bat- Batman. He's the Batman yeah. of the group. Yeah, not with, really with the funds. With the funds. Yeah, not not the brains. It's it's funny. I'll t- I'll tell you this as you're watching this. One of the things that 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 I would like to see you think about who what what roles are they filling? Okay, what are they trying to fill out in a team? Because you do, you have to have your leader. Mm-hmm. You have to have. Uh, the person who who plans it out, whether that be the leader or somebody different, you have to have the muscle. Your strategist, yeah. the muscle. You're... You've got to have, you know, your your person who is the clutch. Yep. Um. And and you got to look at this team and and you start to figure it out. I okay. think about the fourth episode, you're going to start seeing how it works. Okay. Um. They they do not disappoint in in action. I promise you that you will get as much of them doing what they should be doing. Cool. So. That's good. I like it. I, I don't see why people bagged on it. I don't see why the critics were terrible on it. I mean, Landon gave his his uh, thumbs up, what, 8 out of 10? He said 8 out of 10. He said yeah. 8 out of 10. And Strong. I, I am, at this current moment, I am with him on that. Hmm. I am with him on that. And I feel, you know, they said, oh, and, and I did say it's it's Danny Rand, yeah. you know, real heavy. They did a better job with him on this. Okay. I think that they took, maybe they took some criticism. And they're like, okay, let's... Let's figure this out because, like I said, now that I understand that he's a very young Iron Fist and he doesn't understand who he is or what he's about, it makes more sense to me now. So they just didn't they didn't get that message across Mm-mm. in the they Iron They did Fist. not flush it out. Yeah. Like I said, it felt more like he knew himself. He didn't know where he was at. And now I understand that he is capable of, of being in this society, but he does not know who he is. Yeah. They did not give him that information from Kong, Kong Long. Yeah. So. Okay. It's cool, man. I like yeah. it. Yeah, well, I mean, I like the first but episode. Luke Cage is toned back, I think. I feel like he's such a strong actor and role, mm-hmm. they had to kind of... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he doesn't just steal all the spotlight. Yeah. And they brought... The, there's one character... I, I don't want I don't want to spoil anything for you, but there's one character that is pretty heavy once you get to about episode three. Mm-hmm. And there's only eight episodes, guys, which kind of makes it an easy watch. Yeah. Um, But, hey, man, it, I did not think he would be in this as much as he is. So... Okay. I'll put it that way. Well, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. The first episode was a nice little. It was it was it really felt almost good, like, didn't it? Yeah, and it was almost like, all right, let, you know, here's a little flavor for each one of the people we're going to be bringing in. Of course, they didn't meet up yet, but you can tell already how their paths are going to cross because Sigourney Weaver, you know, the, the, like the role that Weaver. she's playing and and what's going on in the city mm-hmm. is really going to kind of bring them together, and you, and you kind of realize that I think, um, but. It did. It was almost like a little appetizer mm-hmm. for what you're going to get when everybody gets together. Now I can't remember. I remember when we read that article that the uh, the media had the access to several episodes uh, first before it was six, released. I like the first, so they yeah. got as far as I did. Um, that's why I team, thought it would be more. Do, do they? Does the uh, combination of the four does that happen in two? Or three, it seemed like it took a couple episodes for them to actually. You see it get four. Together. You see it hardcore in four. So four, they're together. They're together. They're not a team, right? Okay. I mean, even at six, I can't say they're really a team. Yeah. I don't think they want to build in the Avengers, and I think that's what they really issued. These people aren't like, hey, I'm going to versus villain. Let me go out and get my buddies. Yeah. This is not the Avengers. Yeah. You know, this is this is the Defenders. Like, stuff gets so high at an angle. I'll go see if I can get some help. I can't do this by myself. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's pretty cool in that angle. Um, it seems like none of them want to be called heroes. No. That happens in episode one. Like uh, Luke Cage flat out says, 
you that's your word, not mine. That's your word, not mine. And then yeah. Jessica Jones says, "Don't say the H word." Yeah, don't don't do that. Oh. She definitely does not want to be known in this, and it takes her a while to really get her head around what she is, what she's capable of, and who she is. Yeah, she's still. I mean, she's still traumatized. Don't get me wrong. Um, there's some crazy stuff. I will say this. I know I'm harping on how good Daredevil is. The guy who plays Matt Murdock, mm-hmm. he is such a good actor. You're not going to get Daredevil to way late. Okay. You get Matt Murdock. Yeah. That's who you get. Yeah. For a very long time. Matt the lawyer, uh, Matt the, the, the distraught person he is. Mm-hmm. It's just so good. It was so nice. I was like, oh, man, where have you been? Yeah. You know? So I will say this. And like, like I said, I'm not at the end. And this, I don't think this is a spoiler. There's no Punisher. Right. And I know they're, he's not a part of the Defenders. Mm-hmm. But I feel like a guy like that, you definitely keep that telephone number. <laughs> <laughs> they should have brought him in, yeah. Just to just to talk about him, you know. Um, and they, I don't know that they mention him. I don't. They don't bring him up. So, hmm. and he could have moved on. I mean, I don't think the Punisher was real centric to New York like these characters yeah. are. These characters are New York characters. Yeah. Um, there is one joke though, and a lot of the uh, I, I listen to other podcasts. Believe it or not. Um, <laughs> one of the things they talk is a big big problem in any kind of tight city like Chicago and especially New York is where people live Mm -hmm. and how big their apartments are. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you're poor and you live here. Right. How do you afford this? How do you afford this? Yeah. That is answered in Daredevil. Okay. (laughs) Which I thought was hilarious. I was like, I thought the same thing because I've had that in my mind. Yeah, his apartment's huge. His apartment's huge. Yeah. And it's a huge place. And I'm like, he's broke. Mm -hmm. They do, they do not, do not disappoint. They answer that. So, All right. I was really that. happy with that. It's just little things. One of the things, I don't know if it's in the Daredevil at all. All his pictures are crooked. Interesting. I don't know. There's an event that happens, and I don't know if that's why, but all his pictures are crooked. Huh. I'll have to, I'll have to <laughs> I don't know if that's look out his, for that. yeah, if his, his, his new R of like, <laughs> oh, I'm blind. I don't know what pictures. <laughs> why would he even have pictures on the wall? Yeah, exa- exactly. Why would he have pictures on the wall? Yeah. Hmm. Um, I thought one of the observations I made is that apparently every apartment building that we see in these shows, <laughs> they cannot afford to replace light bulbs in their hallways. Nope. Always blinky light bulbs in the hallways. Blinky light bulbs. Always. Everybody's using these horrible halogens <laughs> or, or, or uh, yeah. uh, you know, incandescents that don't work very well. Yeah. Always. And even it was really noticeable in one scene where... Um, Jessica Jones. Yeah. That, well, Luke Cage had... He had uh, flipped his hood up because he was leaving, and he was in like a blinking yeah. hallway. And then she took hers off. It switched to her. She took her <laughs> hood off, and she's walking up a staircase in a blinky hallway. I'm like, good grief. Can they not afford light bulbs? There's a lot of hoodies in this. I mean, that's Luke Cage's go-to, but yeah. there's a lot of hoodies in this. Hmm. I don't know wh- who's manufacturing these hoodies. That's how I, they go incognito. I think that would be... I'm not, I'm not trying to tell them how to do their marketing. But I think if you sold an individual hoodie with your individual characters or you sold a Defenders hoodie Mm -hmm. that had all the characters on it, I'm just saying, it might be worth it. Yep. I'd buy a Defenders hoodie. (laughs) I like them. I think it's a good show. I mean, granted, we're only getting the eight, and they said it's not going to be like something they continuously do. Mm -hmm. But Yeah, they're going to split them back off. We know we're getting another Jessica Jones. Oh, I'm ready for the new Jessica Jones. David Tennant's coming back, I heard. I heard that. I heard that. I'm ready. I, I think Jessica Jones is a good show. I like her snarkiness. I like her failure to embrace anything of who she is or wants to be. Um, just the mediocrity of like, I'm good drinking yeah. <laughs> in my apartment. Mm-hmm. So, And she lives in a crap hole. Oh, she lives in a trash can. And it's gotten worse. Like her, the, 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 her first season, man, that apartment is Swiss cheese. Yeah, and it stayed that way. Stayed, I like that. She doesn't care. Yeah. She literally doesn't care. Yeah. She like, got that window with her name on it, busted, yeah. gone. Still still just <laughs> still a box. cardboard. Cardboard. Yeah, again. Yeah, that's funny. So, I mean, that's it's good stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to continuing that journey. I think um, you will. I think you'll like it. Yeah. And let us know. I mean, if you guys are watching it, love to hear what you're thinking about it. Where where are you? How many episodes in are mm-hmm. you? And, and and what's your experience? It's so an far? easy watch, guys. It yeah. really is. I, I felt like it keeps you it keeps you going. I didn't want to quit to come up here. I literally thought about saying I'm going to be late, <laughs> <laughs> like an hour and a half late. But I thought, no, I got to get stuff. I got to get stuff done today. Yeah. Um. And plus, that's not fair to Justin. You know, he can only drink so much coffee waiting. That's right. <laughs> 
But uh, if I drink too much, then I have to take a bunch of pee pee breaks in the middle <laughs> that's of the recording. Right. Sneak away. I do Sneak my little tiptoe. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be really fat. Right. I, I have to judge that you're going to be on like a long rant about something. I'm like, now's my chance. He just gives me the the turning wheel <laughs> finger sign. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess I'll go on. Um, but yeah, I, I think you'll enjoy it. It's it's good. Right. It's an easy watch. Okay. Um. I wanted to say, as part of Hot and Streamy, we like to throw in video games in here, too. Yeah, you got some stuff. And uh, a couple quick things. So, we did go ahead and purchase the Necromancer upgrade for Diablo 3. There was no doubt in my mind that um, you weren't going to Still getting that. a lot of good hours out of that game. And well, that's, uh, a, that's, that's, you guys, have, I mean, you've said it several times to me personally. I don't know if you said it on the show. The replay, replayability on that yeah. is pretty high. Yeah. I mean, the maps change every time you go into them. They're still the same basic things, but... Like the bonus areas that mm-hmm. open up change, um, the monsters, bad guys you run into change, um, and they're always doing seasonal things on that game. Mm-hmm. Always, there's always some different promotion. It's a lot of fun. I re- I really like what they've done with it, and the Necromancer class, what I've played of it, <laughs> is uh, is fun. We so my wife and I both made a Necromancer. We actually got the whole family to play last night. Nice. Um, yeah, and- my daughter's been on top of me about. She's like, we could all play this game. It's so, it's fun, but it's chaos. Yeah, well, I'm sure. Yeah, um, everybody's got an idea of what they need to do. Well, once you hit like level ten, uh, this ability opens up with the necromancer, where you summon an army of skeletons to fight with you, oh, and they're there Lord. all the time. And there's like, for just one person, are I you think Rome now? I think there's eight of them. So <laughs> yeah. with two necromancers, <laughs> it is you can't see anything on the screen but skeletons. They're everywhere, and they and they. They run and fight whoever they want to. <laughs> so sometimes, if you're fighting one dude, then they'll all be central on there, and and it's just <laughs> there's way <waylaying. laughs> But sometimes, if you're in like a because because a lot of things, a lot of times on Diablo, what happens is you get a horde of mm-hmm. people that come at you, and they just they split off. <laughs> it's like divide and conquer. Yeah, right. So there well, are that's good though. That's a good everywhere. AI, man. I mean, you don't want them all just to go bu 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 and and you know as as they're taking out individuals at the same time, they're getting depleted yeah. down. No, that's that's really good AI they've done for that. It's funny we had joked about um, all four of us making necromancers. Oh, and God. I'm actually so glad now that we didn't because it would be literally you'd be just walking around with armies of skeletons. <laughs> you guys are tying your shoes. Yeah. You know, you're checking trees for loot. Yeah. It was, it's crazy. It's it's really fun though. Um, I like what they've done with it so far, and they they are the epitome of just a. What would you imagine a <laughs> like stereotypical goth to look like? Oh yeah, every piece of armor they get is just <laughs> adding to it. You might as you know it's it's it yeah. probably well thought out. Yeah, that's good, man. I'm glad you're getting some time out of it. But but it is fun. Worth um, the money. Is yeah, what you're I saying. think I think worth the fifteen because you get a few 15? other. That's you get great. a couple extra character slots. You get the necromancer and. I mean, and any kind of free stuff they release thereafter now is going to come. Yeah, to and you, so playing through the game with different characters is a is really it's like playing a new game because you have to play it totally different, mm-hmm. especially because we try to play on the hardest level we can. Sure, and um, it really is a different experience, and they interact with the characters, the NPCs, different ways. Yeah, and um, it, and it's. Yeah, I think that really adds to the replayability. So while yes, the main storyline is the same playing through it, it's still a different experience. So that's okay. Um, then the other thing I was going to mention is I've been playing a lot of the summer games feature on Overwatch. Mm-hmm. You guys said those <laughs> events were coming. Yeah, um, the big thing right now they're doing is Lucio Ball. It's three on three, giant soccer ball, and everybody's Lucio, and you're just trying to knock the ball into the goal. <laughs> And it's like a huge, it's, it's you know, a monstrous soccer ball. You huge. Use, you, yeah. <laughs> Lucio's main uh, weapon is this, it, it looks like a modified kind of speaker gun. So yeah. it's like a sound Oh, blast. a sound gun. Yeah, sound. So he's like, sound wave. so you can, um, you can use that, but it's got like a little bit of a cooldown on it. So you can hit the ball with that and then it's like 10 seconds before you can use it again. But you can punch the ball. And then they've got these um, gold zones that if you stand in them and jump, it's like all of a sudden you are rocketed into the sky. <laughs> um, my son, now I've never played Rocket League, mm-hmm. but my son told me this is a lot like Rocket League. Okay. They've kind of modeled this game after that. Um, and, you know, you get special rewards. Uh, they've got a lot of skins that are related to the summer games right now, and um, I've been unlocking a lot of that stuff. But I'm having fun doing that. But I will tell you, I am much better at three-on-three Lucio <laughs> Ball than I, I am at any of the deathmatch modes. God, I suck. And here's the thing I want to say, too. <laughs> oh, no. Here goes. You're on a team... You know, with you're on a team, guys. You're on a team with like three, five, six, who, huge eight on eight. Yeah, big teams, right? Yeah. 
statistically, wouldn't you say, wouldn't you say the odds are you're going to win about 50% of your matches? Because, I mean, it makes, unless you're on a really good team and you say, I want to stay as a team, it mixes up who you're with all the time. Okay. So, sure, odds are you're going to be on a crap team, but then odds are you're going to get on a good team sometimes. How is it possible... And maybe the least, uh, maybe, the, maybe, get the on a common, terrible team? maybe the common denominator here is obvious and it's me. <laughs> but how is it possible that I lose 80% of my matches? It doesn't matter if I'm playing Lucio Ball. It doesn't matter if I'm playing the death matches. It doesn't matter what we're doing. Somehow, I'm, my winning percentage is probably around 25%. How is that possible? Can I offer a suggestion? Yes. How much talk goes between you and the Randos? Oh, I don't talk to anybody. There you go. And, but 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 the but, people who win, I can promise you, and you've seen the videos I've seen. Yeah. These people who play together and they talk it out and they have strategies, they always win. They always always win. That I don't care if you're playing, you know, blop ops or, mm-hmm. <laughs> or you're playing, you know, Overwatch or you're playing, you know, Legend, League of Legends, any of that stuff. You talk, you're gonna win. Yeah. Well, as I'm talking it through, I feel like I'm answering my own question anyway. Cause well, I think, I think now, that I just now it suck doesn't that account bad. for talent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, you got to put in the reps, man. You got to put in the reps. Oh, I had one of my greatest matches ever though the other night. I, I a lot of people don't like Soldier Seventy Six. They feel like he's like a Call of Duty kind of character, okay. and he is your, your standard. You know, just you know, he's got a machine gun and he's got like a missile. One of his special attacks is like this helix missile. He fires three ro- rockets, mm-hmm. and then he can drop an area of effect heal. And uh, I was on a good team. I happened to have rolled a good team. <laughs> the dice were in your favor. Yeah. But um, we ended up winning the match. I think I got something like, I think I got 19 kills and only three deaths in nice. that match. That's a good match. And at one point, like I was on a, I was on like a 10 player kill streak. And man, I was like, maybe I'm figuring this thing out. What were the other people's scores? Well, I don't know, because it doesn't show you exactly. Oh, it doesn't show you everybody? It doesn't put a it, scoreboard up? It, what it does is at the end, it'll give you, like, whoever has the highest of each thing, oh, okay. it'll show you, like, most kills, longest oh, kill okay. streak, you know, different things like that. Um, longest time defending a point or something. But it doesn't show you, like, here's the roster. And Garden Warfare 2, the, the um, yeah. Plants vs. Zombies does that. You get a full scoreboard, and you can see what everybody did. Which most is of them do. Sometimes embarrassing. <laughs> um, this one doesn't do that. And I think it's on purpose probably because that's, that's a good model. I mean, yeah. it, the norm is the scoreboard because let me tell you my experience when I think I'm having a great game, I'm going to say, you know, I'm, I'm playing sniper on battlefield one and I've killed like 20 something people, maybe five deaths, you know, same mm-hmm. kind of record. <laughs> Everybody on my team's like 150 <laughs> kills. I mean, they have done nothing but pillage the forest yeah. here. I mean, it's like the reason I'm doing so well is because no one else can defend <laughs> against my teammates. <laughs> so it's kind of one of those uh, being the, the worst of the best. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, where I usually show up, because it does, it's like what it does is it gives you four options for like a star of the match, mm-hmm. and it'll say this person contributed, you know, was involved in. 80% of the kills. That's or kind this of a cool commentary. And then, and then you get to vote. Oh. You okay. vote on one of them and they get player of the game or something. But then it also does a highlight, which is not related to the voting. Um, but uh, you don't, as far as I know, you don't get anything for being voted the MVP. It's just, I guess, I bet it tracks rights that, I bet it tracks stuff. that stat. But the only time I ever show up on that board is if I'm a healer <laughs> and I'm responsible for like, I did the most healing. The medic. Yeah. Hey, that's your strong suit, man. <laughs> You're there to soothe the wounds. Yeah. I'll play hey, as like I Mercy will say, or Lucio and I heal. Well, I will say, being a healer, a lot of people crap on it and stuff. Like, even in D&D, nobody wants to be the healer. But the fact of the matter is, when you know where to be and how to be and not get killed, number one, mm-hmm. and you can contribute to your team just raining fire down on people, that's still a good quality. Yeah. You got to be... The, oh, you got to Everybody needs support. It's it, Landon, he said it a bunch of times. In Overwatch, you can't just be John Rambo, nope. every man that's for himself. That's what I've heard You've got to be a team. And it tells you when you're putting your team together... Um, as people are selecting their characters, it'll be like no healers or no tanks, no defensive characters, and you. It wants you to go back and make sure you make balanced. a team, make a yeah. solid team, yeah. make a defenders. <laughs> so right, play your role, and and you have to. You've got to try to play your role because if you try to go go it alone and just like waylay people, 
You're going down. No, you can't, you can't. And I, the thing is, I don't try to do that. <laughs> you know your limitations. Yeah. Some people don't. I try to stick with people. I'm like, okay, this, this guy, this I've guy seen him tearing stuff up. Yeah. I'm sticking with him, and then I'm dead in two seconds. Oh, yeah. Really? Really? I hate people who, I can't say hate, I dislike being involved in teams where we are constantly not looking out for each other, mm-hmm. even though I'm doing 110% for you right now. Yeah. I told you about that one. I would go out there, and I was playing medic, yeah. and I would, I would stick about 100 people and then run back behind my my thing. Nobody came back to defend me. Like These guys started to figure out what I was doing, yeah. coming back here like trying to shoot me. Now, I have a gun, and I can take mm-hmm. people out, but it's kind of hard to do when I see you on the battlefield, and I run out there and put a thing in you, and you stand up and run the other direction, and there's two guys in front of me. Right. Do your due diligence, buddy. Help me out. I just helped you. If you fall down again, I won't be back. <laughs> you know what? My one of my big complaints, and this is an unreasonable complaint. <laughs> unreasonable complaint. But, but it's a but it's one that I I make every. You single know what time. grinds my gears? Yeah, what grinds my gears? <laughs> like if I'm engaged in a one v one situation where yeah. I'm I'm like you know I'm I'm barricading myself behind a wall. I keep popping out and I'm trying to yeah. take somebody down. Nothing gets me angrier than some other enemy showing up from the side that I never saw coming and taking me down. Backstab like, Billy. I was not yep. fighting you, you ass. Yeah, yeah. backstab <laughs> Billy. That is that is the story of my life on every <laughs> FPS. Story of my life. I will be, it'll be me and this, and, and I get a lot into it because obviously I play sniper classes like crazy, but I get into it with me and this other guy. You know, we're playing a little cloak and dagger. We're, we're, you're hiding behind rocks. We're jumping up and taking pop shots at each other. Neither one of us has got the best of each other. And then Doodle Danley will come <laughs> over here and he's like, stab. I'm like, you son of a bitch. Look, you had no reason to come across the lines to get me. And the only thing I can think of that consistently happens with that is that that guy is saying, hey man, I'm getting tired of this dude. Can you go over there and kill him? Because I've had tanks come out of the freaking brush and run me over. And I'm like, there's no way in hell that you knew I was behind this tree over this beside this rock. There's no way. And number two, you shouldn't be over here. Yeah. So... So you yeah. feel me on that one. I feel you exactly on that one. I was like, dude, I'm, we're playing a game here, man. This is a chess match. I don't need your checker trash. <laughs> it is cheap. It is cheap. I don't like it. But, I mean, that's the game. I can't get too mad because I know that's the game. you got to be aware, blah, 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 use your map. But it sucks, man. It takes the fun out. Yeah. That's why I always keep an RPG with most classes. There you go. <laughs> like, oh, you think you're funny? <laughs> <sighs> All right. I'll get off that soapbox now. No, we'll get off the ground there yeah. with the gears. <laughs> Maybe that should have been the roast. <laughs> <laughs> kind of was. You got a cheap roast there yeah. from both of us. Um, all right. So let's move on and talk about our call to our fans That's last right. week. We asked, we sent out a no shirt shout out. This was their second one of these that we've mm-hmm. ever done, and it got a little better response than we did last time. And we asked you. If you had a budget of thirty dollars a month, which streaming service would you? Which streaming services would you choose? Um, Nerd Foo responded, and they said they would go with Netflix, Hulu, and HBO. I can understand that. Pretty that's standard. that's that's the go to right now. I would imagine. So Thomas replied and said that he would just go with Netflix and HBO. So I think he's got a little room in the budget. Oh yeah, maybe it's for that movie, movie pass. pass. Yeah, movie pass. Sne- sneak in the movie pass in there. Well, that's what he wants to spend on his description. It yeah. counts. Yep. And then, lastly, from Andrew, he said, Netflix, AMC, and Bravo for the wife. <laughs> 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 so uh, so there you go. Those, those were the, our three main responses. Um, Andrew said he's, he's a little bit worried that after reading that Netflix debt article that um, he's not a fan of where they're headed, and he's a, his fear is that all these networks will require a cable subscription. That's stupid. Uh, if, that, if that's the truth, what's the point? You yeah. know? I think AMC's model's stupid. I, I think they're just trying to grab people who don't have DVRs, which I find very hard to believe. If you got cable, why would you not pay that extra? Yeah. I mean, it, at most, I've ever heard anybody pay for a DVR's 10 bucks. Right. So, you know, I don't know. I, I, that's a stupid model. I, it does make sense, though. I didn't read the dead article, but it does make sense. Maybe why Disney's pulling their stuff because Netflix may be seem may look like a sinking ship. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, you don't want a sinking ship to have rights to your content. Yeah, that's true. I just I don't think Netflix is going to go away. No, heck but no. but I just really do feel like there's 
there's some threats on the horizon that they're going to need to respond to. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to do. Granted, if they can hang on to them, they're doing a great job with their Marvel stuff. Um, like I said, really enjoying all the shows. Um, Stranger Things, man, mm-hmm. that's a great show, mm-hmm. you know. And there, there's a bunch more of their content that's good. And, and you said Hulu's got all kinds of good ta- content. So yep. well, they're doing all right. Th- those two big, they've been the big dogs for a long time, so it's understandable. Yeah, we'll see where it goes, but. Yep. Thank you guys for shouting out to us. Appreciate those responses. This week, I would ask you to not only do that on Twitter, but we're going to ask you to do it on our new forum as well. If you need help getting there, we do have a link on the bottom of our main website, nerdnewscafe.com. If you scroll down, there's some big kind of goldy orange letters that Mm -hmm. say visit our forum, and that is a link you can click on there. It'll take you right to the forum. You can set up your account. And then join in the conversation on those threads. You'll you'll you will find a thread for each episode. <clears throat> and this week we're gonna set up a thread and we're gonna ask you you can either do it on Twitter or the forum mm-hmm. or the Facebook. Or the you Facebook can do it there too. Mm-hmm. And the question we're gonna ask you this week is which you know, based on our conversation conversation we had on Tuesday, which dormant movie franchise mm-hmm. would you like to see a sequel for? So Continuation, as it were, doesn't necessarily have to be. I mean, a sequel to me means you continue on the story. Maybe just that same world. Okay, you know, uh, an added movie to the world. Okay, so add a movie to but the continuation. world. Continuation could be a continuation. Could be just like another part of the universe. Because mm-hmm. we're getting, like, for example, we're getting this new Blade Runner. Yes, right. Which is not a direct sequel, but it does have parts from the original. Yeah, and um, I've heard I heard rumors at one point that there might be a new Dune at some point. I heard the same rumors, but I don't know how you would do it. Yeah. Um, isn't there like a Tremors TV series? Oh, yeah. I've heard that. So, uh, so yeah. All, all these things are just kind of examples of what we're looking for. We're getting a new Jetsons TV show. Mm-hmm. So, whether it be a TV show or movie, what, what would you like to tap into and create some new content? I want to put a cap on it and say at least 10 years. Okay. Something that is, I mean, Has we say... for about 10 yeah, years. Yeah, we, we've seen dormant. I mean, I'm talking like... Coffin. A decade. <laughs> yeah. A decade at least of 10 destitute years. life. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we've, we've gotten a new Ghostbusters. Not everybody enjoyed it where it went. and No one enjoyed where it went. <laughs> I liked it. Um, you would. <laughs> <laughs> we got a Baywatch movie. Yeah. You know. Which so, is, that's a good franchise. Yeah. It, it, that was a movie based off, and it was campy, like you said. So mm-hmm. that's a good example is Baywatch is what we're saying. You know, it doesn't have to be a sequel. Yep. It can just be... Chips. Chips, that's definitely another one. Which was apparent garbage. <laughs> I didn't see that one. That's, that's disappointing, because the, the actors that are in it are pretty good. Um, yeah. So anything from 2007 mm-hmm. and older. Yeah. So. Yep. What are your thoughts? You will you will have the opportunity to give us your replies on Twitter. We'll do a no, sh- no shirt shout out call sometime around lunch on Thursdays. Mm-hmm. And then you can also go to the forum and do it there. That would allow you to kind of expand without having oh, yeah. a character limitation. I don't limitation. think there's any character limits. <laughs> no, no. Um, characters welcome. Characters welcome. <laughs> yeah, USA. If you guys want to... Uh, oh, God. Uh, the Equalizer. <laughs> well, we did get the movie. We did get the movie. Knight Rider. Oh, God. No more Knight Riders. I, I think, think we've there done, might be something coming for Knight Rider. I think there is, too. And they'll have to include Hasselhoff. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. I don't know. The, the Knight Rider 2000, I wasn't really super impressed I with. I didn't it. like that. It, it looked like they were trying to be something. I, I would offer... Now, I don't know. We make the rules here, so you tell me if you would allow this. Would you say MacGruber is a continuation from MacGyver? No. <laughs> so no parodies, That's guys. a parody. No parodies, guys. Yeah, that would be a parody. I'd put that squarely <laughs> in the parody category. Uh, would you want another Flintstones movie? That one's I been wouldn't. quiet for a while. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't. I didn't really care about Flintstones to begin with, but that's my personal thing. Um, Another good example of one that's been good is the um, Ash versus the. Absolutely, Evil Dead. guys. Yeah, the last one we had was Army of Darkness. Got it like ninety two, and that's a guess. But um, then we got the TV and TV show is really good. Yeah, it's really campy. It's really fun. It's Bruce. It's it's just Bruce Campbell being him, being the character he likes being. Yeah. So think about it. Rack your brains. Mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. Get the gears going and then throw it out to us and then we'll go and we'll, pit, we'll, pitch, it. we'll pitch it to somebody. <laughs> yeah. 
We'll go talk to ABC. Obviously, right. they're willing to pick up some garbage. Good there. Lord. <laughs> They'll take anything. <laughs> Ideas welcome. Or maybe <laughs> maybe we can go talk to Sony Pictures because they're trying to fill these gaps when Bad Boys 3 keeps getting pushed yeah. back. We're supposed to get another Blade at some point. Oh, okay. Is it going to be in the MCU? <sighs> That's the, the Supposedly, the, isn't the rumor is he's supposed to be in Infinity Wars? A oh, mention of him? Yeah. A talk of him? I think I did hear I that. I don't know. I mean, Wesley Snipes is always available, but he's kind of yeah. looking like not the youthful vampire he once was. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's a lot of, of yeah. uh, good material out there that we can pull from. So I'd love to hear people's ideas. Yeah. I mean, we're just spitballing right now, and I would love to see what people you know have thought about and, and been like, you know, they could do a continuation, or they could stay in this world. Yep. I, know, I know one I could think of, uh, one of our, our, our listeners, Eric, uh, Hey, you'd probably want another labyrinth. Oh, okay, and you could expand on labyrinth. I think they left that one kind of open ended. So that's another one that I feel like we've heard that they're doing something with. Yeah, I, it seems like there was a rumor about it, but I don't know. Yeah, whatever came of it. Never ending story. How about never that? ending story? Because truly, it is the never. My, the two was trash. They though. promised it's a never ending story. We yeah, can... that that seems to be not true. <laughs> it ended pretty quick with two. Yeah, I think there was a three though, but I don't know. Um. All right. So. We got to give away a free comic. Yeah, we do. Did I promise one last week? Was I there think one? you did. I think I did too, and I can't remember what it was. So mm. I'm going <laughs> to... So we checked the tape, and I promised to give away the Jean Grey Phoenix Force Generations comic. So that's what you're going to get. He doesn't today. have to, though. It's just a promise. He can be broken. <laughs> <laughs> I could break promises, but that's not what we're about around here. No. We keep our promises. That's just a joke. I like messing with people. We're not politicians. We keep our promises. We don't, we don't try to just get elected based on empty promises. All right, Matt. Give me a drum roll. We're going to get a random number. Hit it. And the winner is Mr. Andrew C. Oh, look at him. Winning again. <laughs> so we're going to be sending you the digital copy of the Gene Grey Generations. I hope that That's you enjoy it. It is a good one. I liked it a lot. And I was talking big stuff about Wolverine. The Gene Grey one's really good, too. It's just the Wolverine was that... That good had, for me. Had a little bit more emotional attachment where the Jean, Jean Grey one I felt like was like very explorative. Yeah. You know, it's what it, I think that one's more inclined of what that generations is about. But the Wolverines one's like, oh, you know, yeah. I think so. He's still around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think you're gonna like it. But we'd love to hear your feedbacks. So we haven't gotten an Andrew view in a while. I know, no Andrew view. So we we no need Android one. view. It's hard for us to say it, but we like to say it. Yeah. So if you want to, you can write it up for us, send it on over. Got we'll, a forum. Yeah, you've got the forum. You have no you have no reason not to uh, give us what your thoughts. Yeah, that's right. That's right. No excuse. Yeah, I don't want to hear any more of this. Oh, I don't like Twitter. I don't <laughs> use Facebook. Well, you don't have to use either one of them. You get on the forum, yep. and you write down your excuses on there f- for us to make fun of. It's easy to get to. <laughs> We've put links on our Twitter. Yeah. There's a link on our website. It's I would crazy. love to see... A bunch of signups this week. I want to see a bunch of members. Blow us up. That's right. Get on there. Tell us what you feel. We don't care. I mean, good or bad. <laughs> we don't have to read it. <laughs> no, we will read it. That's a sad thing. We, we always, we will read anything you write. We read it all. We read it all. Yeah. Even even the silly stuff. Just because you like peanut butter popcorn. And we like, okay, I read that. <laughs> well, tell them where they find everything. Well, they can find us at uh, nerdnewscafe.com. Primarily, everything is on there. But I will tell you, you can reach out to us on Twitter at nerd underscore news underscore cafe. You can hit us up if you've got an email uh, and you have something interesting that would delineate an email at nerdnewscafe at gmail.com. You can also find us on YouTube, uh, Nerd News Cafe. It's not hard to find. Uh, We are on there, too. I always forget to mention the YouTube. I know. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to push that one. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I mean, eventually we might have a, a video. It's going to happen. I promise. <laughs> That's another promise. Sure, sure. Uh, but uh, I think that pretty much covers that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm plug mine. Yep. Uh, I should have. I should have released uh, by now uh, another edition of Tracking Trek podcast. Uh, we're following the adventures of Discovery, uh, Star Trek Discovery. Uh, of course, it hasn't come out yet. Comes out on the twenty fourth, which is a Sunday. I want to say it's going to be an eight o'clock thing. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of covering. I'm kind of going over the coverage. We're covering trailers. A new trailer came out. Uh, and you know, if you guys want to follow that, give me your opinions. You can hit me up at Tracking Trek Pod on Twitter. Uh, and you, I will respond promptly. Not really. Um, but I will respond to you. But and then, got- hey everybody, this is Landon coming in to plug my podcast. 
Game of Thrones talk or got talk. You can find it on buttmuchchips.com. Sit on your button, munch. And you can follow me on Twitter at Landaz. Oh, wow. That, that was hot wow. He, he channeled. <laughs> I mean, that sounded just like I thought he was in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hear get, about that We one. are going to get so He is going to be so mean to us uh, You guys can follow me on Twitter if you want I've never really plugged my personal one It's at the Croots Figure out how to spell it if you want I don't even know what mine is <clears throat> I think mine's at Matt Weaver 4 <laughs> Because I don't care And then um, That's about it I don't have anything else personal to plug I, I'll give Garrett another plug Gummy Bear King on YouTube He's still the king no gummy one bear. no one has contested there, him. There are other gummy bear kings on YouTube. His is the one that has uh like a weird animated he drew on Microsoft Paint a picture of him and then it's got his face in the middle with X's over his eyes. <laughs> and um he's got a bunch of videos on there. Go check it out. But I think that'll wrap us up for so I'm gonna do oh wait, we need Landon. Hey Landon, can you come back? Yeah, I can come in and do the outro for you guys. So for Matt Weaver and Justin Krutzinger, I am Landon Don't. Thank you once again for listening to Nerd News Cafe. Stir it up. You've been great. We've been Nerd News. Good night. Good night. I'll be Justin. <laughs> <laughs>